We are now witnessing a transition in the most populous country in the world and one of the most important countries in the world, namely China. And it is completely different from earlier transitions since the communists took over in 1949. When I went with Kissinger and Nixon, and of course for decades afterwards, essentially the leader was anointed either by virtue of revolutionary or military credentials uh, like Mao, Zedong, and Deng Xiaoping, or picked uh, as a successor like Jiang Zemin, and even the current leader, Hu Jintao, uh, was picked by Deng Xiaoping. So for the first time, we're seeing sort of inside bargaining and consensus forming over the next leadership. Uh, it remains totally secret now. Uh, the good news is it's a collective leadership. The bad news is uh, the Chinese people have no way of knowing uh, how these leaders are actually chosen. Every time there's a leadership change in China, people start forecasting what's going to happen. That's very dangerous. Uh, I believe uh, China expertise is an oxymoron. Uh, it's very difficult to predict, particularly because of the secretive nature and the non-democratic nature of their system. What we are pretty confident uh, that on November 8, uh, two days after our election, we will find that a man named Xi Jinping will be the leader, and the number two person essentially would be a man named Li. Uh, beyond that, we don't even know on the Standing Committee, which is the ruling inner body of the entire Communist Party apparatus and now consists of nine people, whether there will be seven or nine, for example. Uh, also, there's going to be a broader transition. They're going to be replacing the top 300 people in the party on the Central Committee. Um, something like two-thirds of those will change, as will the next body, the Politburo of about 30 people. Uh, many of those will change. So this is a huge transition. Uh, also, the Military Commission which is the ruling body of the largest standing army in the world, will undergo major changes. So this is across the board. As far as predicting what the next leader, for example, Xi Jinping in this case, uh, will do, uh, we really ought to be very cautious. For example, no one would have suspected that Deng Xiaoping would have instituted such sweeping reforms in China and opening to the outside world. Everyone thought his successor, Jiang Zemin, was somewhat of a lightweight. Uh, good-natured, uh, well-meaning, uh, but not really a very much of a, a, a mover and shaker. In fact, uh, during his tenure, China's economy grew rapidly. Their diplomacy, with the help of a very able foreign ministry, uh, came back from isolation after the Tiananmen Square massacres in 1989. Hong Kong was returned to China, and U.S.-China relations were put on a more solid foundation. So he exceeded expectations. Finally, the current leader, Hu Jintao, many people thought was a closet political reformer. He was close to earlier liberal leaders in China. Uh, he looked at political reforms when he headed up the party school which trains communist officials. Uh, I, I met him uh, during that period, and all of us were hopeful he would loosen up the political system. Instead, they've gone backwards, and it's more repressive now in many ways than it was when he took over.